Uh, today we have just a real quick video on explaining the difference between working interest and royalty interest and if you want working interest. My name is Tracy Lenz. I'm a petroleum engineer. I do oil and gas appraisals independently. That's my bias. A working interest is what you have by default if you own minerals. If you lease those minerals, you're giving away that working interest in return for a free percentage of any money that comes out of it. So the working interest means that you have to pay for things to be developed. Say you owned a house and you had a working interest in that house. You would have to pay for building it, for maintaining it. If the AC broke, you'd have to pay to get it fixed. All of those things you'd have to pay if you have a working interest in your home, which most of us do, right? But sometimes you have a rental with an apartment or something where all of that's covered. Now that would be an example of where you don't have a working interest in all the expenses and maintenance and upkeep and building of it. With an oil and gas royalty interest, you only have to pay if you get paid. For example, you might have to pay ad valorem taxes if you're in a state that has property taxes like Texas. You might have to pay severance taxes on the amount that's produced. You might have to pay your share of the marketing fees. But all of that only comes if there's actual money coming towards you anyway. You're not having to pay out of pocket for something that's not generating income. And if it does start going negative, there are some instances where those expenses would outweigh the amount of royalties that you'd receive. It just gets netted out of your future royalties. You don't have to send money to the company. They just don't pay you until it goes back into the positive. There's not much risk in having to pay out a lot of money if you own just a straight up royalty interest. So one way you might own a working interest is if you did not lease any of your minerals. If your minerals are not leased, then you own and operate anything that happens on it. If you own minerals that's undrilled, you can technically go and raise the funds and drill it yourself. That is perfectly legal. You own 100% of the working interest of your portion of the minerals. Now, if you own all the minerals or not, is a totally different story, but at least that portion of the minerals you are a 100% working interest owner of. Usually people don't want to become oil and gas drillers. And so they say, hey, I want this other company to do this for me. I just want to reap the benefits. I'll let you take 80% of the income for me not to have to take on any of that risk. And I want to be a cost-free owner. Then you have a lease with a royalty. The lease owner suddenly takes on all the burden of all the working interest while you have just the royalty amount that's left. While they might get 80% of the royalties, they have to pay 100% of the cost. So whatever they do has to make up for that 20% that they're not making back, right? So they're paying a dollar in order to make 80 cents and you get the other 20 cents. That's how most leases work. Sometimes it's 25 cents, sometimes it's 18 down to 12. That takes all the burden of not knowing how much the well is going to cost. What if something goes wrong? Heaven forbid something goes terribly wrong and they end up spending three or four times more than they expected to drill a well. You don't get any out of pocket because of that. They have all the responsibility because you pass it on to them in return for them taking 80% of your income. That's usually the deal that you want to do if you're a mineral owner. Usually when I come across clients that are working interest owners, it's unintentionally. They acquired the interest, now they have it, they don't know what to do with this. They wouldn't have necessarily gone out and bought it, but now they have it. It's been in the family for decades. Maybe your great grandpa was the man for making deals and doing everything all across the country. You might have acquired some working interest that they were paid as part of their way of investing, kind of like investing in a company. That's their share of the thing that they're investing in is that interest. That's usually a story when I come across someone who is a working interest owner or they're in the industry themselves. Maybe they have a side business, a side hustle. Maybe they're a part-time land man, something where they know what they're doing and they just come across these opportunities to invest or little deals where they can pick up working interest. That would be the only case where I would recommend someone to seek out becoming a working interest owner. There are so many risks that are involved in opening yourself up to all the costs with oil and gas. The person who controls all of the activities is the operator and the operator is the person who really needs to know what they're doing. So the person that's going out there and actually doing the work when things break, figuring out how to fix it, that's the operator. So that's when you have the experts, 
right? The Shells, Exxons, Anadarkos, those type of companies. If you're a working interest owner and you're not the person doing that, you're considered a non-op owner. A non-op owner means you're not operating the property and you have no control over how much the operator spends or doesn't spend to a point. There are documents that control what the operator can and can't do, but for the most part, the timing, the amount, the decisions, you're going to be at the whim of what they are doing and when they plan on doing it and their capital budgets and their timing and their engineers and their decision makers. And if you don't wanna do it, you get penalized for not participating. When you get penalized for not participating, you might as well not own that interest. If you decide not to pay the money in order to do what they wanna do, you're like, no, that doesn't make any sense. I don't agree with that. I'm not participating in this. You can say no, but then there's a penalty that you get for not participating in what they wanna do. And usually that's saying, okay, that's fine. We'll cover your dollar, but we have to get $3 back before you get to make any more money from this well. So there's like a 300% penalty usually that's applied when you decide not to participate. Now that's one thing that can go wrong. Then also the working interest operator gets some amount of fee just for being the operator. It costs them a certain amount to operate that well, to have an office, to have a building, hiring a person to look at the wells, that costs money. So the operator gets to charge the non-op people a certain amount, and it's based on your document that was originally established called the Joint Operating Agreement, and that has certain rules saying how much you're allowed to charge the other owners for operating that well. Over time, that's inflated given a certain percentage, and sometimes that's called the COPUS amount, and that's an entirely different topic we'll get into later. But just know that there is a fee that the non-op owners are charged from the operator. Sometimes that fee is more than the well is cash flowing to you. You might make $800 from that well that month, but they're charging you $1,000 to operate that well, like all, all in. So you're netting negative $200 each month by being a working interest owner in a well. They don't have the same well set that you do, most likely. And then also, if they stop producing that well, the pumper that they have or the foreman or the person that's looking at these wells, it doesn't necessarily get rid of a whole person just by shutting down one well. So it doesn't always make sense on a well-by-well -well basis for those dollars to be plus and minus exactly. You also can't tell them to stop producing that well. If they're producing a well that is negative cash flowing for you and not them, that's not their problem. And then even if it is negative for them, you have to prove that it's negative to them. And how are you going to do that? You have to audit their amounts, fight it. It's already a low paying well. Sometimes you just get stuck having negative royalties each month. That's only if you're a working interest owner. If you were not a working interest owner, when that well goes negative cash flow, you just don't get paid. You don't owe anything. So the two best places to be is either the royalty owner or the operator and the non-op working interest owner is kind of the one stuck in the middle. They don't have any of the benefits of being a royalty owner. They don't have any of the control of being an operator and they're just stuck with whatever happens. That's not the ideal place to be. I would not recommend people invest in these type of properties unless they know it's a really good deal and they know what to do with it and they have that capacity to handle those negative cash flows if it were to happen. Like that wouldn't destroy their portfolio if suddenly you had negative $500 each month coming from a well as opposed to positive cash flow. Does that make sense? You'd want to diversify that non-op working interest across a whole bunch of different companies and properties and operators in order to mitigate that risk. And usually just the standard investor is it going to be doing that? This is this would usually be a investment firm. That is all they do. And that is their expertise. And that's what they're good at. And that's when I would recommend investing in working interest. If you already are a working interest owner, just know that you are going to be responsible for the plugging and abandonment costs of the wells that are drilled on your property. So even if right now all of them are shut in, you're not getting any charges, things seem relatively peaceful, you still might not be able to even sell them 
to anybody, that interest, you might not be able to get rid of it for a positive amount just because there is an upcoming charge. Once that well gets plugged, you will have to pay your percentage of plugging. At a minimum, usually it costs thirty to 40000 to plug a well, like all in all. So whatever interest you have in that well, you'll have to pay that whenever that well gets plugged. If I haven't scared you away and you want to know more about working interest or investing in working interest or what your working interest is worth or how to sell it, I don't sell those things. I don't buy those things, but I can help you figure out how much it's worth. That's what I do. I'm an appraiser. I'm a petroleum engineer. I have that background. My contact information's in the description below. My company name is The Country Oil and Gas. I am the owner, support female small business. Thank you, and I'll see you in the next video.